I'm in the kitchen with these shanks we foraged. Now there's a few things I neglected to mention last time. Chiefly, that these freeze really, really well. So they're perfect for storing in the freezer for when you need them. Ideal. So this fungus likes the cold. Often they don't even appear until there's been a frost. When things start getting chilly, the fungus fills its cells with glycerol, which works as a kind of antifreeze, as well as ice-binding proteins and sugars like trehalose, which all contribute to velvet shanks being able to function pretty normally under conditions as harsh as minus 5 degrees. There's a number of studies looking into the biological bounties that could potentially be hiding in these mushrooms, but more on that later. Warning. This man is not an expert mycologist, nor is he an expert chef. While he claims to try his best, any information you take from this video may prove inaccurate. When consuming wild fungi and plants, always use multiple sources of information, and be absolutely certain of what you're about to ingest. Do not blindly trust Jez. That's fair enough. So we've got our shanks. They've been in the freezer for about a month now. And they're still alright. To defrost your mushrooms, you're going to want to put them capside down on some kitchen roll to help them. Oh, oh, they're all frozen into a big brick of mushroom. So, a uh, struggle to break it apart. Uh, I eventually decided to use a knife helped a lot. And then lay them capside down to help dry out their slimy caps while they defrost. A lot of recipes say to remove the slimy layer, but that's very fiddly and you're just going to end up covered in slime. This just about does the trick. Meanwhile, skin a pineapple and cut it into small chunks. This is the basis for our sweet and sour sauce. You can use tin pineapple, that's absolutely fine, it doesn't really matter. Add a bunch of sugar and stick it on a low heat to simmer away. Add a generous amount of garlic too, I think I used around six cloves. And soon enough, you'll have a fragrant, sweet, juicy, garlicky concoction. But we're not finished yet. Add sriracha, rice vinegar, soy sauce, and the most essential and secret ingredient, ketchup. No, really. Mix it all in and leave to simmer for at least an hour on a low heat. So while that's all getting saucier, let's get some veg. Got a bit of garlic, a couple of chunky spring onions, they're not leeks some baby corn and sugar snap peas for a bit of crunch. Peel a thumb sized piece of ginger for freshness. Just use whatever veg you want really, peppers, more mushrooms, doesn't matter. The shanks should be nicely defrosted by now. Get rid of any that look a bit gross and unstick them from the kitchen roll and cut into roughly equal pieces. Heat some oil in your wok or pan. I use sesame, but rapeseed is fine. And add your garlic and ginger. Let it sizzle for about 30 seconds before adding the mushrooms. And then the veg. Then add a small amount of stock. Uh, just make sure you mix it properly, unlike some people. Add your noodles, and let them absorb all the stock liquid. If your sauce is looking as glossy and beautiful as this, it's ready. Have a taste. Mmm, it's my favourite. You can add whatever you want to this. The mushroom noodles and sauce go with a lot of stuff. I have mine with some crispy sesame chicken, 
and I'll happily admit, I ate a lot. I also thought it would be nice to add some enoki mushrooms. Wait, what, what are enoki mushrooms? I thought this video was about velvet Ever heard of an enoki mushroom? You get it in a lot of oriental cuisine. Interestingly, an enoki mushroom is exactly the same species as this. It's just when it's cultivated, they put it in the dark and they tie things around it to make it long, white and thin. These are enokis. Lovely little tiny boys. You can find them at pretty much any Asian supermarket. Um, they're not too hard to find. They grow in a very similarly dense cluster to the wild variety. And that's pretty much the only similarity really. Because they've been cultivated to have these tiny little caps of really long stems, which are a lot more palatable than the wild variety. They smell nice too. Enokis are widely used in Japanese cooking, where they're also called enokitaki. Elsewhere, they're also called golden spindles and futu mushrooms. Generally, they're best eaten raw, where they have a nice crunchy texture and a mild taste that can be tainted by cooking them. In Nagano Prefecture in Japan, an enoki farming and eating hotspot, it was observed that the number of average cancer cases was much lower than elsewhere. A number of studies have revealed that enoki mushrooms, meaning velvet shanks as well, seem to possess some anti-cancer properties, which is rather exciting, and shows how much more there is to learn about the fascinating world of fungi. Okay, here we go. A nice veg and mushroom soup. Get your vegetables, onions, leek, carrots and garlic, and chop them. Don't forget a couple of potatoes, like I almost did. Sweat the garlic and onion with a bit of butter on a low heat for a few minutes. Then add your veg and some stock. I use chicken, and I actually mixed it this time. But you can use mushroom or veg stock. I'm not your mum. Let it boil down a little, and then add your mushrooms. I didn't have many shanks left at this point, so I bugged them out with some chestnut mushrooms from the shop. Couple of bay leaves, and a lot of black pepper. Salt to taste, and leave all the ingredients to get to know each other for an hour or two on a low heat. We're looking good. Slop in some double cream and just a bit more pepper. Now it's all nice and softened, grab a hand blender, or just a normal blender, and homogenize the hell out of it. Beautiful. So I may have missed a couple of chunks, but I don't mind the odd chunk. Top with parsley, grab your favorite bread and enjoy really hearty, with a lovely mushroom flavour that works well with all that pepper. I promise you it's worth it. So those are just a couple of examples of how to cook with velvet shanks. Uh, they're really versatile, so be creative. See what you can come up with. Don't listen to me entirely. Uh, I'm no chef, and uh, I'm not claiming to be a chef, if there are any chefs watching. Um, don't forget, the Poisonous Lookalikes, if you've forgotten, check out the previous video. 
um, and only cook with them if you're 100% certain. I don't want any of you getting poisoned, please. It's embarrassing, all right? And just get out there, see what you can find, and have fun with it. And uh, next time, we'll be looking at some more winter mushrooms, even though the weather's getting pretty nice now. I'll see you then.